today I'm going to be talking to you guys today about Kagura Bachi Chapter 21, which is entitled Lukewarm. So, today's chapter, um, okay, I'm not iffy about it, but that ending, even though, and, and a lot of people speculated, so yeah, it was seen, now I don't know if that's who I think it is. Because it could be an entirely different character. But it would seem that Sojo is alive. What the fuck? I don't know how he managed to survive that explosion, but it seems he's alive. He's alive and well. So I guess Sojo is back. And who knows? Once again, he probably might switch sides if we're being so completely honest. Um, if that's Sojo, because we don't know who that is. Like in all honesty and fairness. Because a lot of people can be like, oh no, that's Sojo. That's Sojo. I was like, I don't, I don't oh, like okay, so basically I'm just not gonna count the fact of the matter is that this could be Sojo or this could be an entirely different person. Or this could be Sojo with memory loss or type of deal. I don't know. I have no clue. Everything is based on speculation. Like real, like that's really everything we have to base this off of. Everything is based on speculation. So is this Sojo or is this not Sojo? That's the main question on this latest chapter of Kagurabachi. Because not honestly in Kagurabachi, I'm not going to say nothing happened in this chapter because we got a lot that happened in this chapter. First and foremost, uh... The translations that I read on, apparently they messed up the translations uh, because people are saying, because I keep saying he, he, he in regards to Hiyuki, but it looks like it's being confirmed that Hiyuki is a girl. So uh if you so if you see the pictures and you guys going why is he keep saying hiyuki's he 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 it's because the translations that i read it on are saying that hiyuki is a boy when the uh official documents are saying that hiyuki is a girl so just go ahead and getting that out the way right now so first and foremost my main question is because this is like a huge okay i'm not gonna say it's a plot hole but my main question is is this why in the world did the Kamunabi Corps just not have Hiyuki take care of Sojo off rip? Now I understand Hiyuki is this OPS agent for the Kamunabi Corps, and Hiyuki believes in and Hiyuki believes in this type of justice that no one else believes in and Hiyuki she also believes that when it comes to the uh Kamunabi core they're the only right in this world instead of everyone else like you can't do anything solo you can't do anything yourself and things of that nature now another thing I also have to address is the fact that Hiyuki told Chihiro give up the sword cooperate with us and give up the sword when you could have easily just said well hey our you know hey our goals align let's just work together because the thing about it is Shihiro hasn't done anything wrong he hasn't done anything wrong because throughout the time he heard what the Sazanami kid was saying Shihiro was like hmm I have to protect this. I have to protect the, the the word of my father, the name of my father, because of the simple fact being is that we're getting introduced to Kiora Sazanami, who is the current head of the Sazanami family, which is the head of the family in regards to um the situation at hand. I mean, don't get me wrong, the battle was dope. I enjoyed the battle. The battle was fire. I do like the commentary by Tofuku, who is the uh, guy who made the barrier where Chihiro and Hiyuki can go all out. I do like the commentary of Tofuku, where Tofuku is like, but he's a good kid. Like, I really don't understand why you just won't allow him to do what he needs to do. He's a good kid. Because the thing about it is, this man could have came after me at any point in time. But he chose not to. Not to mention, Chihiro hit Hiyuki with the blunt side of his sword. Meaning, it didn't cause no damage. It may have caused a cut, but that was it. And Hiyuki just took this as blatant disrespect. She was like, we have to go all out if you want, because this barrier will only close once one of us loses the fight and things of that nature. But they didn't count the fact of, of, of Sazanami passing out because since Sazanami entered himself into the fight and he passed out, technically he lost the fight. So now the barrier is gone, even though... Hiyuki was getting, even though Hiyuki was, you know, at her limit, Tofuku caught her, and Hiyuki was like, well, since they're going after Shinuchi, we're going after the Shinuchi. And 
there's nothing wrong with that at all. There's no problem. I mean, clearly it was going to come to this point. But now that we are interjecting the fact that Sojo could be alive, could be the boiling point of Hiyuki getting ready to attack Sojo. Now, once again, I, I'm not confirming that Sojo is alive or not because we don't know who that is. Now, if Sojo's alive, cool. That's what's up. He probably gonna come back as this this type of protagonist, or you know, he's probably gonna come back as one of those um antagonists who are teeter tottering on the good guy side, the bad guy side. Cause let's be real, if you went through something like that, and if you're still evil, you gotta go. And that's my honest opinion in regards to this whole situation of Kagadabachi. So in all honesty and fairness, the fact that we got introduced to the head of the Sazanami family, Kiora, um, he literally said something that kind of piqued my interest. He said that the Shinuchi is more potent and more stronger than the six sacred blades, even though it was made by Rokuhira's dad. He said that this blade is more powerful and more potent than 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 the six sacred blades once again we don't even know what the hell this thing does we don't know what the shinuchi does and apparently it's 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 a subsidiary if it, of, of of its own kind if he's saying that it's stronger than the six sacred blades so all i gotta say is holy shit because if that's the case, then this is piquing my interest more because that's that's also another thing. Tofuku has pointed out, no, nah, that Sazanami kid is weak. He's weak. He's weak. He's weak. Because everything is pointing to the Shinuchi being wielded by the Sazanami kid. I keep saying the Sazanami kid because I forgot his first name. I'm sorry. Um, In all honesty and fairness most of the times i'm not good with names and i don't and i don't see his name enough once i see his name enough i remember his name but as far as that goes chihiro this 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 was a good chapter okay it was a good chapter let me point that out right there it was a good chapter not gonna lie i enjoyed the chapter it's just that once again like i already stated why didn't the kamunabi core like if they knew sojo was such a threat if they knew this man was such a threat and he had one of the sacred blades why didn't you just have yuki go from jump which i can kind of understand maybe Hiyuki is their last line of defense before the people at that table start wrecking shit maybe Hiyuki's the last line of defense before they start wrecking shit themselves and they use that team because that team is like, hey, you go do whatever you need. We believe you're more than capable of doing it. But most of that team lost their lives. So with that being said, that's that that's really my one gripe about this. Cause the way he Yuki's talking, like, oh, I'm this shit. I can do this. I can keep up with your hero. Blah blah blah. So why didn't you guys see he Yuki to take care of Sojo? Like, real talk. Why didn't you see Hiyuki take care of Sojo? Clearly, they probably didn't want to get rid of their best piece, their best tool. So that's the best way to say it. Now, I will go ahead and admit this because I know a lot of people are pointing out that little part where uh, Chihiro used the short blade and he used the real blade. And it's like what I said, and it's like what Tofuku said, Chihiro's a nice guy. If he really wanted to kill Hiyuki, he would have killed Hiyuki. But he hit Hiyuki with the blunt part of the blade. Clearly because Chihiro does not want no... He don't want no beef with the Kamunai. Because let's be real. If he killed Hiyuki, he would definitely have beef with the Kamunabi. Not to mention, Azami is in the Kamunabi. So, of course, he don't want to cause more trouble for Azami either. So, regardless, it was an okay chapter. I enjoyed it. I hope you guys enjoyed it too. If you enjoyed it, let me know in the comment section below. And as always... um like share subscribe hit the bell notification so you don't miss any of my videos i'm pumping out these videos like crazy but anyway guys it's me it's gt so i am watching the hell do you think i am and i'll catch you guys in the next video and i'm out peace